welcome back. And today we are talking about... going on guys and today we cover Elder Scrolls lore but there's a problem with that you see destiny has a limit it's also sort of new in relativity to the Elder Scrolls whereas the Elder Scrolls was in the 90s destiny was made not so long ago so the lore isn't as in depth one of the reasons we're talking about Elder Scrolls is because the Elder Scrolls 6 is not coming out until whenever if it comes out when you're watching this video I wish I was you. But as for the rest of us, we are only experiencing the special edition, which was just released. But that doesn't matter. Skyrim is an amazing game full of rich lore to uncover and tell you. But where do I start? Well, I guess the easiest place to start is with the planet. You all know Skyrim, Morrowind, so-and-so, but the planet you live on is called Nern. It has two moons, Mundus, Zekunda, and the creation is just mythological. It's not fact. I mean, you could go as far and say as the Big Bang created this and matter came together and formed a planet, or you could say that Lorcan created it alongside the Eight Divines. Now, those names probably sound new to you, except for the Eight Divines, unless you played Skyrim. So one thing to understand about Skyrim is that there is the Aedra and the Daedra, good and evil, day and night, etc. They see Lorcan is the son, even though deities don't have gender, is the son of Sithis. And Sithis is the far spectrum of light and dark. He's all the way to the dark. He is pure emptiness. He is the void. He is just evil. The Dark Brotherhood are the ones that actually pray to him. Now, Lorcan is a trickster. No one really knows how Nurnor was created, whether he convinced them to help him, or he absolutely just tricked them into it. We don't know. Lorcan is a trickster, so we can only assume the latter. In Elder Scrolls, there's also a lot of religion. Religion is very important. You will probably most likely hear about the Nine Divines, even though I was talking about eight. We'll get to that. That is the most widely accepted among the men. As for the elves and everyone else, they have their own ideas. You see, the Eltmer and the Elnofrey, they believe that Lorcan is the direct problem to their mortality. They don't want to be mortal. They want to be immortal. They believe that they were. As for the Dunmer, they kind of blame him for their mortality. However, they just kind of say, this is a test to our strength. We're going to overcome this mortality and become immortal. So thanks, Lorcan, for giving us a challenge. Also kind of screw you for making us mortal along those lines. As for the men, they believe that they are not descendants from the Aedra. They believe they were just created from nothing by Lorcan. Thus, they owe their entire existence to him. In their opinion, Lorcan is the hero of mankind, but as you just heard, all the other races pretty much give him the finger. Now back to Nern. You see, Lorcan somehow made the Aedra, which are like the angels, to create and pour in their power and their strength into creating this planet. However, during the process, some Aedra pretty much hopped off. They did not want any part. They didn't want to give up their power. They didn't want to give up their immortality. They wanted to stay the same. Those people went on to become the Daedric Princes. That's a whole nother video entirely. As for the eight that stayed, they became divines. The Aedra. Well, technically, they didn't become the Aedra, they always were, and they died Aedra. You see, there are no Aedra left because they're all dead. And as for the ones that survived, they are now Daedric Princes. So it's kind of like a weird thing whether if another Aedra decided to leave, that one would become a Daedric Prince and there'd be seven Divines. It's one of those things. It's not like you can become an Aedra, except in one case, which kind of just throws off my theory. It's just a really a complex lore system. As I was talking about the eight divines, there are nine actually, and his name is Talos. But like I said, I'm sorry, you just have to wait. So from creating Nern, the eight divines perished. Some believe they have ascended to a higher power. That's up for interpretation. As for Lorcan, he also died as well. As such, he did not have much influence over any of the events to come. However, he is indirectly responsible for at least three major near disasters in the last decades of the Third Era. And his remains are connected to the disappearance of the Dwemer. The Dwemer are the dwarves, the super technologically advanced people 
that we've never seen. We've only seen the robots. If you heard closely, you'll notice that I said the third era. That is because the eras are divided to fourths. We live in the fourth one. Why well, say we? Skyrim is in the fourth one. And as for the mythological that I was talking about, that is the first. Even prehistoric, probably before that. And I'll go in the depth of each era in different videos. However, I can tell you the lengths of each one. The first era lasted 2,920 years, the longest of all the ages, and possibly one of the richest in lore. The second era was only 897 years, the third era was just a mere 433, and as for the fourth era, we are currently only in the 201st year. That is the last known piece of lore that has happened. However, there is a fifth age, and there is a little bit of it in a certain lore. You see, the fifth era has not occurred in any Elder Scrolls game, however, it did appear in the events of Landfall, in which Tiber Septum activated the Numidium and fought the Altimer. Whether that will come, I have no idea. But that's enough about Nern, let's talk about the Divines. You see, the Nine Divines are the most widely accepted religion among the entire continent of Tamriel. Mostly because of Cyrodiil and their empire that spread across the entire continent. Now you'll see a lot of the Nine Divines because of Skyrim. The Skyrim is a part of the Cyrodiil Empire, so it's kind of supposed to be in the Nine Divines. Now I was talking about the Eight Divines, and that's because the Ninth Divine was actually a person and was raised to the power of the Aedra through his action. His name is Talos. He's the hero god of mankind, god of might, honor, state, law, war, governance. You say he's got a lot on his plate, and he did a lot. So much so, that he did so much, you can actually make an entire video about him. When will that come? I don't know, you're just gonna have to subscribe for that. But we can talk about each individual other divine. There's Akatosh, there's RK, Debella, Julianos, Kynareth, Mara, Stendar, and Zenithar. Akatosh is the chief of all the other gods and goddesses. He is the dragon god of time. Arke is the god of the cycle of life and death. Debella is the goddess of beauty, as seen by her statues that you probably picked up and twirled around. Julianos is the god of wisdom and logic. Kynareth is the goddess of air. Mara, the goddess of love, as you have to obtain her necklace in order to marry. Stendar is the god of mercy. And Zenithar is the god of work and commerce. He's also known as the traitor god. Now, how did these eight divines come to be? Well, there's one name that you could stand back to, and that is Elysia. Now, Elysia, also known as the Slave Queen, was hailed as a saint. She lived during the First Era and was responsible for ending the human enslavement by the Aelids. Now, the Aelids are simply just elves, just a prehistoric one, the original elves. She is the one who found the Cyrodelic Empire and became the first empress of Cyrodel, initiated worship of the Eight Divines. But Elysia is the one that allowed the religion to prosper. If you caught that, you are correct. There was human enslavement, and the men were not the top dot. Some argue you can just say that they aren't still. Now, in the light of the Skyrim Special Edition, the first era year 113, the Nordic king Harald had conquered Skyrim and founded the first human kingdom of the continent of Tamriel. Harald managed to drive the elves out completely, primarily into Cyrodiil and Morrowind, which is where they continued to stay. And the human slaves saw the possibility to do the same on their own rulers. During this time, the men didn't just gain all this power. The alien, or the elves, government was severely fractured. They were all in separate kingdoms spread across the entire continent, and they constantly fought each other. Meanwhile, the slaves, or the men, got power strong enough to defeat some fractures of this government. More exact location, they decided to attack the land of Skyrim. By driving out the elves, they decided to set up camp and stay in the north, and that is how we have the Nords. But that's not when Elysia actually fully came into power. So she was just still growing up at the time. She started around the year 242, where Elysia's rebel army finally struck out their masters. Elysia herself had often had intercede with the divines on his behalf. Now, the king of the aliens at the time was Umeril. And the aliens noticed how the men were obtaining power back. So he was given control of the alien armies. Now, Umeril was of divine bloodline. He had an alien mother and a divine father. So his magic skills were unmatched, second to none. He was untouchable on the battlefield. To further his advantage, Umeril made a deal with the Daedric Lord Meridia and was granted the use of the Aurorans as foot soldiers. 
What are the Aurorans? Well, they are simply Daedric creatures in Meridia's realm, commanded by Umero. But somehow men came out on top and defeated Umero, just barely. However, Umero's spirit escaped to Oblivion, where he would wait and return centuries later. Now, the man who defeated Umero was Polino. The fight between Polino and Umero was victorious, however, he was injured. So the other remaining alien kings swarmed and tore him to eight pieces. They left his head for Elysia to find. However, even the death of Plenial couldn't halt the human revolt. After years of fighting, Elysia's army finally took control of the White Gold Tower itself, which was the symbol of power, ending forever the reign of the Aliads in Tamriel. After Elysia was crowned empress, her first major act was to abolish the worship of the Aliad gods. However, no one knew about any other gods except the Aliads. The Nords violently opposed the Elite Gods and worshipped their own. This was Lorcan, whom at the point they called Shore. She came up with the idea of worshipping the eight divines who helped Lorcan create Nern. Now this stuck. It didn't stray too far from the Elite Gods, but it did give them a different hope. You see, the men looked up to Lorcan, so the eight divines that helped him only seemed right. And as for Talos, the ninth divine, he wouldn't be seen for another 4,000 years. But anyways, adventurers, I think it's been a little bit too long. As for the next video, we'll talk about in depth as to what each of the nine divines actually were and their history. Going back in time technically, but a lot of progress was actually made. If you're a little bit confused, I'm sorry. It is not something to easily grasp. In fact, myself, I still don't understand most of the things that's going on either. If you want a quick, dumbed down, mono a mono conversation about what just happened in this entire video, it's quite simple. There's the Aedra and the Daedra. The Aedra were the good, and the Daedra, they're not necessarily bad. They were just the Aedra who didn't want to create Nern alongside them. As to how we became to worship the Eight Divine, that is through Elysia, the whole rebellion against the Aeliads, or the Elves, in overthrowing their masters because they were slaves at the time. Another important name to remember is Lorcan. Although we, as men, view him as a good god, he's a trickster and a bastard. He's hated among every other race except for the men, and that is how we got the Eight Divines, because the Eight Divines are the ones that helped him. But as for next video, as like I said, we'll go into depth with the Eight Divines, and then the ninth, we'll talk about Talos, because that's a whole nother story completely. Because you gotta ask the question, how did a mere man rise to the power of Aedra? But anyways, that's been it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Later, guys.